Hi everybody and welcome to a theme one microeconomics video looking at this question using production possibility frontier analysis the PPF examine with examples the ways in which a country could bring about an outward shift of their PPF and consider what this might mean for people's living standards linking the idea of the PPF to economic and social welfare uh, here's a, an example of an outward shift in the PPF. I've drawn a linear PPF, and oftentimes they're drawn as a, as a curve, uh, aren't they? But this is a linear one. For example, uh, an increase in the amount of technology available to produce capital goods would shift the PPF out from PPF1 to PPF2. And that will be an increase in a country's productive potential. As we go through the answer, I'm going to take you through two um, themes. Essentially, all you have to do is build two key arguments, make your point clearly main point clearly, then build the analysis, build the application, and if and when you can, evaluate the point you've made. My first point is that a PPF, uh, I, want, I want to define the term to start with, a PPF illustrates the combinations of the output of two products that a country can supply using all of their available factor inputs, all of their available resources in an efficient way. My point, my first point here is that one way the PPF can shift outwards is if there is an increase in the country's active labor supply an increase in the quantity of uh, labor available for production build the point this might come from either the natural growth of a country's population and uh, picking here in particular countries with a fairly low median age many of these are in sub-saharan africa ethiopia has a median age of less than 18 years one of the lowest rwanda Still involved in post-genocide reconstruction, of course, but a fast-growing country has a median age of just 19 years. Many countries have a low median age, and that can drive natural population growth. I'm going to show you a chart of that in a second. The other way in which the labour supply might grow is if there's a strong net inward migration of people, particularly of working age. The UK is a good example of that. We've seen a strong inward migration over the last 15, 20 years, uh, averaging you know, over 200,000 a, a year. That's now coming down a little bit as a uh, post, uh, post-Brexit post referendum. Canada is also a country that's been a major recipient of uh, migrant workers, uh, UAE for sure. And of course, many of these countries rely on migrant workers to sustain their growth by increasing their labour supply. Evaluating the point. So my point is that the PPF can shift out if there's an increase in the labour supply. But my evaluation is that the extent to which this leads to living standards going up uh, depends um, on the extent to which migration or population growth puts extra pressure on the demand for the use of natural resources and also increases demand for key public services such as state schools and, and health services as well as housing. So the big danger of course is that um, rapid population growth can, can lead to higher house prices and uh, more expensive public services. Although natural and migration induced population growth is likely to drive potential GDP higher. The final impact on per capita incomes, which of course is a measure of living standards, is not guaranteed. That's a good evaluation phrase, by the way. The final impact on X is not guaranteed. It's a lovely evaluation phrase to use in an essay. And then develop it further, much depends on, another good evaluation phrase to, to use, much depends on the extent to which the quality of the labor force, economists call it human capital, can also get better. Can you see what we're doing here? We're making our points, we're building the analysis, and then we're trying to evaluate. Our second point is uh, that the PPF might shift outwards if a country successfully manages to increase investment, the rate of investment measured as a share of GDP. Again, define your terms when you have an opportunity. Investment in capital goods, such as new plants, Machinery, factories, new hardware, the software that goes with it, investment in key infrastructure such as ports and telecoms and energy leads to an increased capital stock. So a country has more capital and therefore new capital tends to be more productive than, than older capital. And higher productivity means that more output can be supplied from a given amount of inputs, a given amount of factory resources. Productivity is higher. That leads over time to increase wages. Firms can afford to pay people more. That lifts per capita incomes and helps to take people out of extreme poverty because it allows them to increase their consumption of essential 
goods and services. And I'm using an example of China and India, two countries whose, if we look at the data, I'll show the chart in a second, the data showing investment as a share of GDP, in both cases, China and India have increased investment. In China's case, it was nearly half their GDP. Here's a chart to show it, showing the, the increase. Can you see post sort of 2000, 2001, the increase in the share of both countries' GDP taken up by investment? The UK lagging behind the world average there. Evaluate the point. So you've made the point, you've developed the point, you've put an application in, evaluate the point. However, a lot of people use that as an opening gambit. Although investment is important for courting an outward shift to the PPF and contributing towards long-term growth, go back to the question, there are also some possible downsides to consider. And another, another good evaluation phrase, there are also some possible downsides to consider. One is that the shift towards investment uh, might actually uh, hurt short-term living standards. So if you make a big decisive shift towards capital, that means there might be fewer resources available for consumer goods and services. But countries can get around that, they can import uh, consumer products, but of course that might have a consequence for their trade balance. And secondly, or second, the quality of investment is probably as important as the quantity of capital investment. That goes back to my first point, doesn't it? I said that the increase in the labour supply was a factor, but the impact depends on the quality of the labour as well as the quantity. I'm actually th sort of fleshing out a similar argument here, that an increase in the capital stock is important, but it also depends on the quality of what you're investing in. Poorly constructed buildings, bridges, investments in technology that are inappropriate to a country's development might actually limit the impact of investment on living standards. Oftentimes, the capital that comes in is not necessarily appropriate to a country's economic circumstances. So there we go. Quick look at two um, two ways you can approach this particular question. I think the key takeaway points when you're writing economics essays is make your points well, nice and clearly. Build some analytical reasoning. Apply some little bits of evidence along the way, and be prepared to evaluate your point. And of course, a good theory diagram can go a long way to to helping the answer. Thanks for joining in this video.